Hello, my name is John and the purpose of this video is to give you a brief introduction into Transit Migrator and to show you the different features within the application. Um, there will be other videos to give you more detail about the specific sections, um, so please look for those on our website. Right now this will be just a brief introduction um, so that you can be acquainted with uh, Transit Migrator. What you see in front of you is the default interface. This is the same interface that use you would use to migrate one user or multiple users. Um, the, to transition into a batch mode for multiple users is pretty easy to do and I'll show you the table for that. At this screen you can choose to migrate email, address books, calendars, or tasks um, by themselves separately or together or however I mean, you need to for your environment. Um, sometimes certain applications um, have files set up a different way and so you can go ahead and, and migrate the sections whatever works for your project. Um, choose your source application from the drop down selection box and let's choose Lotus Notes. Put in any required information that you need. Choose your target email application. Enter the settings you need for that target. And once you're ready, go ahead and enable that migration. Right now I'm ready to migrate Lotus Notes and all the message folders will migrate um, using the settings that I did just here. If you want to zero in and maybe uh, look at the folders and see you know, what you want to migrate or uh, maybe change to what's happening here, you can go ahead and load your folder list and review what's coming across and, and if there's certain things that you want to exclude, go ahead and add it to the exclusion list. For example, maybe junk mail. You'd want to add that to the folder exclude list. Maybe there's a folder in here that you want to be called a different name in your target email application. You can right click on that and add it to your folder map table. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with folders. Here's your folder exclude list. Here's your folder mapping list. Maybe I want notes to go into um, my data. If you have email addresses that will change, if you want all email addresses to change from the converted email, you can go into the translation table, type in what the old address is, put in the new address, and then if we find a match, we'll go ahead and change that. This is really helpful for systems based on maybe the X500 um, uh, format and you want a valid email address to come across. This is the tab that controls batch migration for multiple users. You can fill this table with all your user accounts and then Notice here at the column header, this is a variable. If you put this variable in your form uh, into the main interface rather than uh, the username, we'll look at this list and put in the values for you. And if you have a file-based system or a folder-based email system, load from source, press that load from source button, and load in the pattern of what you're looking for. Maybe it's a directory of files or um, a directory full of folders that's isolated or segregated by individuals. Um, go ahead and do it this way and load this information into the table. Once you're comfortable with um, that area and maybe um, maybe you want to change your, your migration, maybe uh, uh, there's certain logging uh, features that you want to uh, en enable, you can go into migration options, choose custom options, and choose from literally hundreds of different choices that you have for your project. Look at the general section for common things such as logging, and then look at your uh, source and target email application from the choices here and see if there's anything else that you want to set. Once you're comfortable with all the settings, Go back to your main screen, look at the items, it's enabled. If you want to migrate the other sections, and if the information is going to be the same as this you know, from the email side, click on the copy config button, copy all these items over to these other areas, enable them, and then start your migration. When the migration happens, the migration monitor shows up and it shows you what's happening during the migration process. Um, this, If you're migrating multiple users, you would see multiple users uh, come up on this screen and you, you can increase how many people can migrate at the same time. Um, this uh, monitor will show you basic statistics about the migration and it will show you who it's working on and every person that's being migrated has a user ID associated with it. So if you want to you know, uh, look at more detail about what happened with that user, just remember the user ID and look at the log file with that number. When the migration is finished, you can get a migration report. It's in XML format, which is viewable in um, Excel. 
you can open up the report and it'll show you the same things that you saw in the migration monitor but in a little more detail. Um, if you want to know the folder counts, you can change your report logging level to give you more detail per folders. And then if you want to look at what happened for a specific user that was migrated, open up the log file associated to that user, like user 0 was the first one, and there's verbose logging that opens up into an HTML file that you can look at with your browser to get the details for that specific user. There's all kinds of things that you can do with Trends and Migrator and various ways that you can um, com complete your project. You know, if you um, have something that you want to do but you just don't see it here or maybe you haven't seen an application that wasn't on the list, most likely um, it can be done and most likely we can migrate that email application. So if you run in, in, into any problems, review the help file, send tech.support an email, um, and just ask for um, help. And also remember to review our website for more videos um, about the specific areas. Thank you for watching.